it gets passed from here. And today let's talk about the premier endgame system in Torchlight Infinite, which is the Nether Realm. So as in a lot of ARPGs, once you finish the campaign, the real game actually is just about to start. And the same is uh, true for Torchlight Infinite. Now, after you finished Act 5, you can go to the Nether Realm Mentor right here, and it will tell you to go up these uh, stairs, and it will show you this menu right here. Now, on this area, you can see five regions, which is Glacial Abyss, Blistering Lava, Steel Forge, Thunder Waste, Voidlands, and then you also have two bosses. Uh, with the Void Rift and the Realm Lord. So when you start, you will only have one of these unlocked. I think it was Glacial Abyss. It might be Blistering Lava. It doesn't really change much. But let's, for example, say we go into Glacial Abyss. Uh, now, this looks a little bit different for me because I already unlocked this. And this stays on your next character. You don't have to do this over and over again on your characters. Um, and what you see here is that in the middle, this is the Watcher. Now, what you see here is the progression bar. There is certain map tiles within this region, right? So you can do Ramparts of Justice, Swelling Mines. These are just different regions to run through and kill different bosses. Now, uh, first thing to mention is that this progression bar obviously starts at zero and you have to do four of these regions in order to fill it, which doesn't mean that you have to do um, four different ones. You can also do the same one four times. On the bottom left down here, you will see the time mark system. This is where the cinders come in. If you click on it, you will see here it goes from one to seven. And this basically just increases the difficulty of your encounters. You're going to start at time mark one. And as you can see down here, these regions have a level. And if I would increase it from time mark one to time mark two, you see the level goes up. And it is not a coincidence that this looks like cinders. So basically, when you complete time mark one, you will get a cinder. So then you will be able to do time mark two. And that will also play a role here. So this is basically just a progression system. As you can think about it, there's five regions with seven time marks. 5 times 7, 35. So in order to get these 35, you will have to, in all five regions, defeat the boss seven times in all of these difficulties. And these ramp up pretty hard, so don't be overzealous. Definitely upgrade your gear. Uh, farm on lower ones if you're not comfortable. Depending on what skill you use, it might be really, really rough. Uh, some of the regions are more melee friendly, some are more range friendly. So that definitely depends on your build. Now, the way we open these areas is by having beacons. Now, beacons are basically, if you're from Path of Exile, like maps. Uh, and you can see how many you have from each region down here. So, for example, it tells me I have 21 Steel Forge beacons. However, these are unique to their time mark. So, for example, if I open this, it tells me I can uh, open three maps in time mark. One, three, and two, 21. Um, and I have a lot of sevens, obviously, because I'm already uh, at the highest difficulty. Now, once you have a certain amount of cinders unlocked, uh, you can fight the Realm Lord right here. And the Realm Lord is basically just like the final boss, so to speak. And you also get a passive point for your build. Now, one thing I want to say is that if you're not sure what to do next, for example, I'm leveling right now. Uh, it tells you exactly what you have to do. These quests are basically to get your talent points, right? And it tells me right now, explore Steel Forge and def defeat the Plane Watcher, Time Mark 3. Um, now, this basically means I have to go to Steel Forge. I have to go to Time Mark 3. Boom. And then I have to fight this guy in the middle. For me here, for example, I would have to do six of these layouts and then I would be eligible to fight him. After you did that, you go down here and uh, he will have uh, the Nether Realm mentor will have a quest marker and you get your talent point. Now, the Realm Lord needs you to kill four bosses in order to unlock him. So, for example, I could go to Thunder Waste right here, do this rotation. It tells me I have to do eight of these maps. After I do eight of them, I kill the Thunder Wastes Watcher, and then one of these here will be filled. And if four of them are filled, I'm eligible. So if I click on here, it will basically tell me Realm Lord will appear after you defeat four more Plane Watchers. Also, if you're curious what these bosses drop, it always tells you here. There are special drops, right? Special uniques. There is uh, these fluorescent memories. Um, you will uh, drop tier seven, tier eight beacons. Uh, and also a Truth Ember a lot of the time. Same goes for these Watchers. They drop different uniques. For example, the Glacial Watcher has a uh, cold-based drop pool. Now, when it comes to the Void Rift down here, you don't really have to think about this. This is a very, very end game thing. Uh, you can fight Keegan here, which is a uh, special boss. Um, if you put in three of these keys, uh, it will allow you to fight the normal version of Keegan. And if you have the fourth key, which is quite expensive on top, you will fight the Uber version, which has even better gear. Also, once you completed all of these and you have the 35 Cinders, in the left bottom corner, this will show up. And basically, you can ascend to your eight, so to say, the Nether Realm Space Time Turbulence. This will make it a lot harder, and I mean a ton harder. These jumps here are pretty cute, right? Tier one to tier two. 
but the jump at the end is really remarkable but it also gives you a ton more mobs and a ton more drops so it's definitely worth it however getting the beacons for this is also kind of rough so if you're farming for currency right now if you're farming for upgrades don't do this it will be too rough uh, for you 100% stay at maximum at tier 7 but now that we understand this menu we've done a lot of work already uh, we want to go a little bit deeper into the mapping system because you might think about how you can actually make currency and I will uh, dedicate its own video about this but you have to know the basics um, so the important thing here are these cards if you look at all of these regions for example Dragon Rest Canyon doesn't have a card on it it's blank right but then what is this firsty mines right if you click on it it tells you 12 extra groups of normal monsters kind of complicated what's going on here so in order to understand this we have to go to our card library right here at the start you will have no cards uh you unlock cards whenever you finish a rotation right here we're going to go to that in a second but for example if it says five out of five here after you did five regions it's zero out of five and then you either get a new card or you can upgrade a card more on that in a bit uh so we will have to unlock these over time i already have all of them upgraded to five stars I go to view card library it will show me all my cards and with these cards you can make a deck uh now do you know that until you get 10 cards it doesn't let you make a deck because your cards has to have at least 10 cards if you get your 11th card now you can tinker a little bit more now what this deck does is that whenever you finish a rotation down here for example you did five maps this goes to zero out of five it will shuffle the cards in you and it will take five out of 10 of the cards that you chose and put them on random regions, which means you can customize what you can farm for. For example, there's certain things like Generous, which says uh, Flame Fuel has a 14% chance to be upgraded, which means you can upgrade Flame Sand to Flame Elementium. Whenever Flame Sand drops, 14% chance to actually for it to be Flame Elementium. And now there's a few strategies here to go for. I think this needs its separate video. I just want to go over the basics here. There's a few things you have to know. The most important one uh, is the stat Inheritance. So this card, for example, says matching monsters have a 16.9% chance to drop one additional Ember. First time you're going to get this, the percentage is going to be way down because you're going to start at one star. You're going to upgrade it over time. You'll always get a choice. You will know what I mean when it comes to it. I cannot emulate it here because... I already have all of them upgraded, unfortunately. Inheritance 5, you can click on it, what it means. If you activate this for the next five maps, this effect will linger. So it will stay for the next regions, even if you do other regions, which is pretty interesting because this makes it so you can stack up to five of these effects. And on the last maps, you'll have all of the cards before basically stacked up. As an example, let's put all of these right here. These add monsters and they all have Inheritance 5, right? These adds add normal magic monsters, rare normal monsters. If I stack five of these on the last map of my full five rotation, I would have all of the ones before. So let's say I do this on the first map, this on the second map. On the second map, I also have the bonus of this. On the third map, I also have the bonus of this and this and so forth. So basically, the further you get into this and you stack these cards, the juicier and the harder your maps will become. The second keyword you have to know is memory. Uh, what happens is memory is basically like inheritance, but only if you run exactly the map this card is on. So for example, I have yearning right here and it has memory too. Uh, now, if I did this map, it would remove one of the memory, um, but it would still be there. It only gets consumed after the memory goes to zero. So for example, in this case, I could do this twice. However, this effect doesn't linger. So once I did the memory, it doesn't show up anymore it just was for this one map so a good strategy would also be you start out with inheritance stuff and then at the end you finish on a region that has a memory card but i will stop here because i know this will get a little bit too much here uh, now for example in this region i already completed four maps uh, and what you can see here is that it says one out of five so i have one more map and down on the side here it tells me this is what I chose and it has inheritance five. So the three here means it would also last for another three maps. Uh, same thing goes for this. Now, this is a little bit of a weird UI uh, glitch, but basically this gets to show you on your next map. I would also have the effect of this and the pity card. So this is your trade deck, but there's other cards as well. And they're random and global. You will unlock these by killing bosses. It goes up to even tier eight bosses. Some of these cards are completely insane. And these are global cards or like your chaos deck. And you cannot influence these. There is no deck here. They just go onto the board completely random. But when you get them, oh boy, you should take them. For example, Jealous gives your legendary monsters, which is the map boss, for example, one more fossil. And these can be worth quite a bit um for example this is a chaos card right here as you can see uh this is not in my deck and it's still on the board legendary monsters drop two more energy cores which isn't that great but it's whatever also this is a global card greed 
Uh, now, the rarer these are, the less chance they have to appear, but it's still nice to have the chance. This makes it a little bit more random, makes everything a little bit more spicy. But in short, you can plan around your trade deck right here. You cannot plan around these chaos cards. They come out completely randomly. However, that does not mean that you cannot adjust to what's coming. That's kind of what makes them special, right? So for example, if you get a Jealous card, which gives you one more Flame Elementum from the boss, well, no matter where this falls, you're probably going to do that map, so you have to adjust accordingly. And that's basically all the basics you have to know about this. Uh, so if your account is completely new, all you have to know is there's 35 Cinders to unlock, 7 times 5 for 7 time marks with different difficulties in 5 different regions in between you will have to do the realm lord one or two times you're eligible by killing four bosses right here then you click on him and you can fight him the void drift is something completely separate unless you want the challenge uh, you shouldn't really think about it just unlock your stuff uh, very important tip here at the end as well is unlock your cards as fast as possible you might not want to go for extremely tough maps you might just want to find a layout that you really like that you can finish fast and then you do a lot of these rotations right for every five maps you do you can upgrade one of these cards or unlock new ones which is really cool right that's going to give you way more um sophisticated ways to uh build your deck and that's going to give you more currency if you're smart about it once again we're going to do a separate video on how to get the currency with that said i hope you could learn a thing or two from this video and uh see ya but that's it for the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up but if you haven't already subscribe as always a huge shout out to my twitch subscribers and my patreons i couldn't do videos like this without you thank you so much for the support but yeah uh, i hope if you're new this could kind of give you a little bit of a, a sense of this there's obviously a lot of things you're going to learn along the way i understand it's complicated um but in total just have fun just play through maps and you're going to unlock all of these over time don't stress too much going for high levels. It's better to clear faster and have lower levels. Get some currency, get your gear, get your XP so you don't die and lose your XP because levels also mean power. But with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.